All right, so in continuing with assignment six and creating a, a type poster that goes around our spot illustration, we started with text blocking, chose our text blocking that looked best with our spot illustration, worked with a typeface that we found on defont.com and then modified it from screen grabs in Photoshop. And then we need to vectorize it using Illustrator to bring it back in before we add color. So here is my black type, but I decided I didn't really like how the man looked. So I brought in this new element, which is just a raster element from another typeface in Defont. And now I'm kind of re typesetting where I put the typeface to make it a little bit more interesting than just that at least to give it that chance. So I'm going to just use my compositing skills and a lot of Command T. And I can set them to multiply mode so I can see all the angles around them. Hold down Shift to modify. Place. get rid of the white with my magic wand right and then remember when you're typesetting you're also dealing with kerning the space between the letters so command T with warp can be very helpful in really controlling all aspects of it including the kerning. Might move both of these a little bit. So just layout of the type. Make sure we have space for it. Hmm, where's the up? There it is. Yeah, that's going to work. Maybe if you hold down shift, you can squeeze it. And if you do warp, of course, you can do a lot more things to mess with it. And now the in. So this is an interesting example because it's using multiple typefaces with my spot illustration and modifying all of them to make them fit my needs. Get rid of the white around it and transform it, stretch it, holding down shift, move it. Command-T, rotate it. Then finish off with warping it to give it a little bit of an italic feel to go a little bit better with that graffiti. Be a little bit more readable. little bit more dynamic. All right, let's try it again. There we go. Good morning. All right, now the only thing I really want to keep from this layer is the dash. So I'm going to steal that duplicate that onto its own layer and then move that where I want it and maybe play with because the width of it is now doesn't need to be quite so big so I'm gonna shift that down All right, like so now is there any other adjustment I want to make I'm gonna try moving these behind my character illustration I'm 
And it's actually kind of interesting if the wing goes behind the A. It gives you more yeah, but the, the in goes, or the character goes in front of the in. So these are things to play with, right? And if that's the case, I think I'm going to alter it just a little bit. Take these two. And maybe just warp them or distort them together. So I don't like how the A lines up so neatly with the wing. But I'm being pretty picky here. So I might don't have to worry about its readability so much since it's up on the top. I might stretch it like that. I'm going to show you how you, we get all this done. And now the M. There we go. Let's rotate it. I want to curve it around a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's pretty readable. Maybe drop it a bit there. So I need kind of the M and the up to balance each other. Okay. And lastly, I'll play with this just to make sure the kind of flow of the lettering works. So I'm going to tilt it a little bit. It's all about command T. Playing with size, playing with placement, and avoiding uncomfortable tangencies. Right? Okay. And then is there anything I want to change with the bottom before I vectorize this? Can duplicate it. And I can rasterize it if I want to do full warping. So I want it to, to bow down a little bit more, be a little bit bigger. Good. And then remember the other thing we can do is we can we can add a black stroke around it just to thicken it up a bit if we think that's worth it. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's pretty good without it. Okay, so now. I've followed all these steps, and now I need to vectorize it, right? So this is just a repeat of our, of our fifth video. So how do I vectorize this? It's really good to remember vectorizing is taking raster imagery, turning it into a vector, and we want it just to be black cutout shapes like we did for our logo. So the first thing I need to do, I just need to turn off my, my spot illustration, and then I need to... doesn't really matter if I have white on it or not, but I need to save it as a test file. So I'm going to say save a copy to the desktop, and I'm going to save it as either a JPEG or a PNG. Even if I got rid of all the white and saved it as a PNG, when you bring it into Illustrator to Live Trace, it's still in black and white logo. It's still going to find white shapes. So I need to do that in the advanced options. Always turn off the background color. I call these files that are meant to that are raster files meant to be vectorized test files because they're transitional. And then I open up that test file in Adobe Illustrator. And while that's opening, I'll show you in the assignment, 
I did find a freeware version of this that works pretty well. So if you look in assignment six, and if you're working without an Adobe license, and you want to be able to vectorize, I'm going to add it in here. And I don't know how long this freeware site will be available, this browser-based site, but it's called Vectorizer AI. And I'll show you how it works with both of them. But some of the, the issues, this might be very helpful in your own professional practice. There we go. There we go. So I'll show you both ways, right? And I've compared these in the other class and the other videos because that's mostly freeware class. But if we go to Vectorizer AI, it's just browser-based, it's free. We can drag our JPEG test file there. And then we just say, OK. <laughs> and it will start vectorizing it. In Illustrator, this is what we need to do. It's a little bit more involved. This is what I recommend. You take your large selection tool. You hold down Shift and Option and shrink it so it fits on the artboard. And then you go to Properties. You scroll down to where it says Live Trace. You have to have it selected in order to do that. So, sorry, I keep using Live Trace. That was the old name for it. It's Image Trace. Then you're going to see black and white logo. And I can help you with this. And then you're going to click on the Advanced Options right here. You can also find those under Window and Image Trace. Under the Advanced Options, there's the Advanced drop-down menu. And then you have to say Ignore Color. So you see how the image has white here now. When I say ignore color, it will ignore the background color, and it will just be the black shapes. And that's what we want as a vector. Once that's done, you have to hit expand. And that turns it into vector shapes that we can then modify. So you can see the anchor points. OK, now that type is a vector. I can use the pencil tool to clean it up if I need to, but it looks pretty good. There's just little things I might want to change, like use my blob brush here with black just to fill in these little holes. Just tiny things. Just so the type's very, very readable. And this is just a pretty standard kind of bubble text. But I could use my, I think I showed you before, I could use my knowledge of Illustrator to redraw things. Like if I wanted the inside of that star to be a little bit more like a star, I can use my pencil tool and start on the path and end on the path and redraw that, that cutout that's in there. like magic scissors. And then if there's anything I need to delete, I can always just use my small selection tool to do that. So once I have the vector shapes I think I want, and those look pretty good. This looks pretty good. I could always adjust it here, but once I'm happy with it, I'm going to say File, Save As, to my computer, and there are two formats that work in Photoshop. One is an SVG and the other is an EPS. EPS is becoming less useful, actually, outside of Adobe programs. It used to be a format I'd use all the time with clients, but now I'm needing to go back to the older file format, which is, which is SVG more, which in some ways is a little trickier, but for some reason,